Hello and welcome, welcome to today's video, four keys. I want to say three because originally there were three keys, but then I decided to add an extra one because I feel like this really has to be broken down to four steps and not three. Four keys to shifting an old pattern. So many of us are stuck just repeating the same thing over and over and over again. And this is not something to beat yourself up for. We all do it. You know why? Because 95% of your life is subconscious. This is proven by neuroscience and some brain scans. It just shows that so with some individuals, it's basically 90 to 95 on average. Uh, you're not in control of your life. They're automatic programs. They're automatic responses that you've just memorized because you've been doing it so often. So that's by the age of 30, uh, I feel like, I, I, yeah, that was um, not I feel like. That was the study by the age of 30. 95%, 90 to 95 of your life is subconscious. You're not aware of it. So naturally, it's kind of difficult to shift the programming. However, today I'm sharing with you four keys to simplify this process and not just on a surface level, but going into the root. Okay, so first of all, I want to dive in before I go into the four keys, what they actually are. Why do we want to shift on the subconscious level and for you to be so aware that you are shifting things on the subconscious level? I'm sure you've heard of people who got rich and then lost it all or who lost the weight and then gave it back because the subconscious was not programmed for long term results. It still ran the old pattern. So imagine you have a document on your computer and you press print and it prints it out, you take the document, you're looking at it, it's like, oh, there's a typo. So you take some white out and you correct it. You're like, all right, I'm good to go. And you press print again, and you get another piece of paper that for some reason has the same typo that you just fixed. So you fix it again, and you again press print. And you have the same damn typo again on the third piece of paper, but you keep correcting it. But for some reason, the printer keeps giving you the same typo. The surface level is not the problem. It's the programming that's the problem. You can fix the typos all you want, but if you don't fix that typo in the document, in the computer, you're just going to keep getting the same results and getting really, really frustrated. Why doesn't it work? So the four keys have to be incorporated on the subconscious level. Actually, some of them are uh, in real life and there's a little trick that I'm gonna give you that uh, actually makes it work and how to make it work and why it doesn't work for many people. So step number one, to change your personal reality, to change the kind of life that you have, do you know what you gotta do? You gotta be a different person. That seems like a lot of work. I can already feel like some people are there like, oh, I don't wanna do that. That's okay, that means you're just not dedicated to change. That means you don't wanna, I don't know, be wealthier or have a good relationship or um, I don't know, any of those things that people are after, have a better body or just feel better about yourself. That means you're not committed to it and that's okay. And it's important to acknowledge ourselves because a lot of people go into victim mode of well life is working against me and I just can't and the economy and my partner sucks and um, I don't know there's just so many good things in stores like ice cream and chips like I can't say no to that it's all happening to me okay and your point of power just even if you're not going into yes I can change my life understanding that it's my personal responsibility and you know what? I don't want a solution. I choose to stuff my face with chips and ice cream. I choose to stay in this relationship that I know is toxic. I choose to not go for a job um, that would pay me more or to uplevel my skills or to invest in myself. I choose to not feel as good as I could because I don't want to invest in myself. That stings. Admitting that hurts. And I know that because I had to do that even right now because I've done so much inner work. I've connected with my inner child and ego deeply. And I know those moments when my ego is just frustrated and it's like, I don't want to change and everything sucks. And well, just like life sucks. Okay. 
And that's okay. And I have those valid moments of, I understand. Let's do a life sucks moment right now or an hour of just things suck. And, you know, like, why do they have all these chips available in stores and ice cream of all these different flavors? Life is not helping me at all. And it's important to admit that and it's important to be okay with that. Because being in that place is a lot further than being in victim mode of everything's happening to me. No, it's not happening to me. I'm choosing it, but I like to be stuck. And from that place, when you get comfortable with that, it's going to be a lot easier to shift to, I choose not to be stuck. It is my responsibility. So we went from complete victim to life's happening to me to, okay, it's not happening to me. I'm choosing, but I'm choosing to be stuck to, it's not happening to me. I take personal responsibility and I want to improve my life. So getting back to step number one, you got to be a different person. How committed are you to your change? A lot of people go into, I'm going to use eating as an example. They go into, I'm going to go on a diet, but this is going to be my cheat day. If you change your personality to, I'm a person who cares for my body, there is no cheat day. Why would a person who is so conscious aware, it's like, I love my vessel, I care for it deeply. Oh, but today I'm going to cheat, like I'm going to get back to my old self. It's like, no, I wouldn't put that in my mouth. I wouldn't eat that because it's horrible for me. And I'm a person who cares for my body. When that identity shifts, that is when you create long-term results. You can't slip back to an old pattern because that person doesn't exist anymore. But it's like, you got to burn the boats to take the island. If you're leaving boats and if you're leaving doors open, you're not going to step into the new version of yourself. Hmm. Now you get to, I would actually encourage you to pause this and just write out and write out because a different part of your brain gets activated when you write by hand. That You can type it out, but by hand is better. All the places where you have, you know, left those doors open, Maybe you broke up with someone, but you're still keeping the contact or, you know, checking up, are they single or not? Or just checking up how they're doing. Just do have maybe, like, I know that relationship didn't serve me, but is that still an option, right? Or an old job, or maybe you start your own business and you're there like, but is that job still available? Like, do I still have people there in place, you know, for a plan B? It's like, no, you're, you're going plan A. You're going for doing that, which is serving you. Or again, in the workout example, it's like, yes, I'm this, but I need a cheat day as well. To change your life, you got to change your personality. You got to be a different person. So what life do you want to create? What does that life look like? And again, I would encourage you to write that too. And what person, who do you have to be to have that kind of life? This is something that I do with my one-on-one clients, especially in terms of, well, in all aspects, but um, especially in terms of relationship. When they say, I want this particular partner, I'm like, great. Are you qualified to date this person? Like, would they want to hang around with you? Even if you get them, can you actually make them stick around? And oftentimes it's, sometimes it's like, "Eh, maybe kind of, sometimes it's a no. Because like, actually, no, like, I don't have any of the qualities that, you know, I want this person to have. So, well, you can't really get there from here now, can you? You got to be a different person to have the possibility of that partner coming into your life of that and wanting to stick around. So that was step number one. Step number two. So to change a pattern, you have to know what the old pattern was, right? And what worked, what didn't. Now, Here's what not to do. And you see that in governments a lot. When a new government comes in, it's like, let's change everything, okay? And then the one after comes, let's change everything again. There are some things there that worked. It's like if you're renovating a house and you're just looking around, it's like, okay, let's just throw everything away and start anew. That's not a really, well, first of all, cost efficient or time efficient way of doing things. So from the old patterns it's not just that everything is useless and has to be you know has to do um that we have to get rid of what was that that was just like a brain freeze um but it's rather that we get to look at the pattern first of all why 
why did I fall into the pattern? Where did that originate? And this seems like a lot of work. Honestly, you don't have to do it like taking every single little thing apart. This becomes automatic once you do it with one or two things. And this is something that I do guide my clients with because I got to say it is, it's not impossible. It is absolutely possible to do it on your own. It is a lot easier to do it with a teacher. I know that I, for myself, resisted that for a long time. And I was like, I'm a lone wolf and I can do it myself. And coaches are expensive. So why would I invest in that? Um, I understand that the work that I did with my teachers, I, I could have done it on my own. Yeah, it would have taken me 10 years or more, which is what I hear from people who don't hire that or who jump from coach to coach because they're not, it's like the government thing, because they're not there staying with a particular system long enough for it to actually work. So um, what is the old program? What is the old pattern? What worked, what didn't in that? And what is it that you want to create? So the step number two is really asking, what is it? What is it in regards to the old pattern? What is it in regards to the new one? Step number three. All right, so you've identified what didn't work and you've identified what you do want. And that is, also, that is an important step of its own. So yay, good job. Your ego, however, will probably not be on board with this. It won the opposite. As I said, you're not wired for happiness and for a revolution, for living your potential. You're wired for comfort and staying small. Like whatever we know, if we were a little bit pushed outside of our comfort zone, that's where we're going to stay. Until we build that muscle, until we stretch that muscle. So it's like, oh, okay, I'm excited to do something new, to do something, um, you know, in whatever aspect of life. I am kind of going off topic a little bit, but this is an important point, And I feel like this is a whole different video. When we train that muscle in one aspect of our lives, it does not necessarily mean that it will translate to others. So for example, there are a lot of people that are very successful and they're like risk takers when it comes to money, but in relationships, they want to stay comfortable and they're afraid uh, or the other way around. Or in so many, for example, traveling, it's like when I'm traveling, I'm there like a daredevil. I'm going for all these experiences. But with my finances, I like to be, I like to play secure, right? So it, there may be different blocks that you may have and not be aware of. So that's, um, that muscle needs to be strengthened on several levels. And again, this is something that I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients. So if you want to do that with me, I'm actually opening a few spots. Now uh, we can get on a clarity call, see if uh, we're a match and go from there. So the link is right below if that's something that speaks to you. So now, so now back to the topic. The ego is likely to not be on board. How do we create that smooth transition? Know your audience. What does that mean? When you're selling, when you're in business, I just I have uh, one economics and one business degree. So I know that uh, even though none of the curriculum resonated with me, that's absolutely not something I enjoy doing. What I do know, and that's what a lot of the people speak about in the business world, is psychology and knowing your audience. In the same way, you got to know the audience in your mind. Know your ego. What are its cues? So for example, you know that, let's say you want to be fit, right? You have a body goal. And you know that the ego's cue to stuffing your face with chips or ice cream is when you have a work deadline. You know the cue. So therefore, you can predict that this is what's going to happen. And you have to be self-aware here. You really have to go into the observer role of, oh yeah, this is what I'm doing. And just, it's it's not, it doesn't have to be a long process of, let's collect all the data of every time that I stuff my face with ice cream or chips. You know this, your mind, if you ask direct questions, your mind will know. So if you, even right now, okay, let's do it now, let's do it now. It's gonna be a really small version of what I usually do with my one-on-one -on -one people, but, um, Take a deep breath into the belly, into the chest, into the nose. Exhaling out, letting it go. Again, inhaling in. I want you to be really slow, very intentional here, not with, okay, when are we gonna get to the questions? Exhaling out, but just being here with the breath, allowing yourself to fully receive the breath, straightening your back. Uh, putting your shoulders a bit back, just allowing yourself to claim space, allowing yourself to receive this air coming into your body, inhaling into the belly, into the chest, into the nose. Now you're going to hold the top a little bit. 
and exhaling out, letting it go. Okay, and now from this place, asking yourself, and you're going to actually fill in the blank, when my nervous system is dysregulated, or when I'm off-center, when I feel off-center, I usually, and you fill in the blank, what do you usually do? X, Y, Z. Could be I binge watch something. I call friends. And some things may, like, they may seem har harmless, but it's also bypassing because, for example, when we're um, soothing ourselves by with other people and their presence, it's it's fantastic because you know friends can uh, co-regulate our nervous system. However, when we're solely relying on that, that's not healthy because we're just using someone else because we don't have that um, ability. It's not built. We didn't build that within ourselves yet. And I'll ask you that question a couple more times because we want to go from the ego to what's underneath that. Inhaling in again, deep breath in, asking, what else do I do when my nervous system is dysregulated? What else do I do when I'm off center? It could be eating, could be drinking, could be sex. Again, with people, with friends, like it's like I call my friends every time that happens. Could be work. I know that I had one at some point, healthy slash unhealthy workouts. When I felt like I couldn't, I wasn't out of control. Uh, I like I couldn't control life, so I was like, okay, well, at least I'm gonna build my body and control my body. So that too is bypassing because there's just they could be in it's like healthy coping mechanisms, but they're still coping mechanisms. And we need that, our nervous system needs that because we don't feel our feelings fully. And this is something that I address in the video uh, in the series of six keys to living a bulletproof life. So definitely check that one out if you haven't. So one last time, taking a deep breath into the body, the deepest breath you've taken all day. Exhaling out. What else do I do when I feel dysregulated? When I feel disconnected? When I'm off balance, what else do I do? And I, I do want to address this that some people will say, well, if I'm working out when I'm dysregulated, I feel like that's a good motivation, right? Or so much like even workout music, it's like, yeah, I was going to, you know, we're going to prove to them that they're wrong or whatever. It's just kind of this like, warrior like not from a place of connection but from a place of validation or like let's go and let's get pumped and yes but think how much better you would be if you do that thing out of alignment oops if you do for example workouts i know for me it was a game changer when i saw working out not as okay it's something that i have to do it's my opportunity to connect with my body and it's a completely different experience and the results are completely different. It's similarly as so many people, um, you know, who eat healthy their whole lives. They eat like kale and broccoli and I don't know. I can't think of anything green. Just they eat healthy. And then they go, how the hell did I get cancer? Why are all these people who are consuming complete crap are fine and I get cancer when I'm caring for my when I've been caring for my body for years? Because it comes with this attitude of, oh, kale this is gross and i would rather not eat it but i have to and i pressure myself and i push myself and therefore you, you get different results so if you're going there into well i feel like you know me going very um passionately towards my job when i'm trying to bypass let's say my uh, emotional things with my partner that's a good thing I'm, I'm becoming very productive and that was telling me in the past no, you're not, because you're not moving from the right place. And all of that accomplishment that you can have in your work can be just so much easier when it's from a place of centeredness and alignment. So this exercise was just to tune in for you to become aware. What are those patterns? What is the cue? So this brings me to step number four. It's very, very, very difficult, not impossible, but very difficult. And we don't want this channel is not about making life difficult. It's not about push through it. It's about 
How can we flow through it? How can we just glide through it? Okay, so it's going to be pretty difficult for you to shift one habit. Let's say um, you have cravings, like food cravings, after six and you're saying, okay, now I'm not going to eat anymore. That's really difficult to do. If you're not used to it, it's very difficult to do unless, yes, your mind can shift and that first step is very important. Like, I'm just the kind of person that doesn't feel hungry after six o'clock anymore. And you can program that. It will be very easy to do that. However, oftentimes for a lot of things, like, yes, I've done that with clients. Now that I'm using this example, I have done things like that with clients when we fully shift into a new personality and it's just easy. Um, Oftentimes, though, that has to go hand in hand with what I'm sharing with you right now. Yes, you have a new personality and can the transition become smooth rather than um, triggering and very unbalanced for the mind? How do we do that? Instead of trying to shift or bring in something completely new, incorporate that habit with already an existing habit. So for example, if you have trouble working out, begin something and I know this sounds ridiculous but honestly it works it worked for me it worked for clients so just bear with me here brushing teeth you brush your teeth every morning right I hope you do uh if you brush your teeth begin by doing something as simply as you know just going on your tippy toes and doing that exercise like okay being conscious like as I'm brushing my teeth I'm working my muscles okay this is my cue I should do my 15 minute workout right now or 20 minute workout right after I brush my teeth and a lot of people will go into, yeah, but 15 minutes, nothing. At the end of the day, is it better to have 15 minutes or zero minutes? Because the mind will get you to that zero minutes of postponing. It's like, yeah, but I don't have 15 minutes right now. Or I don't have 30 minutes right now. And it's only 15 minutes. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. Oh, the day is done. And I didn't have enough time. So 15, zero. Yeah, you got to start somewhere. And when you have those 15 minutes, then just the 20 minutes becomes automatic. It's just like, oh, it's five minutes more. And you begin to find the time for the things that you prioritize because you've changed that pattern. That was just one of the examples. Again, for example, eating. A lot of people are like, well, I don't, I'm so busy. I don't have, because I work with a lot of people who have very busy lifestyles. It's like, well, I don't have time to eat. Incorporate it with something that you can. Combine it with something that you are already doing. So that is your cue. Like, just like we talked about the negative patterns right? Understanding what is the cue. When, when I feel sad, that is when I start stuffing my face with food. When I feel sad, that is when I start calling my friends. So if your goal, and it depends what your goal is, right? Like what is that target? What are you shifting into? If your goal is to, I want to self-regulate my nervous system. So it's, you understand that, okay, this is happening now. What am I going to alternate it with? I know for me for a long time, it was um, when I wanted something sweet, it was, okay, me wanting something sweet is my cue to work out. It's not a cue to go into the kitchen. It's the cue to, this is my 20 minute workout now. I just got the signal. This takes getting used to, but it works. And especially step number four, I really wanna emphasize. A lot of people try to bring in new things into their routine and it doesn't work and it's not sustainable. You might keep at it for a few days, maybe a week, but then you go back to your old self because it's not connected to something that's already in your mind, like this neuro pathway that's like, oh, I'm supposed to do this, like brushing your teeth, you do it automatically. You don't think about every single movement anymore. It's just automatic because you've practiced this so many times that it's a no-brainer. So the same thing, you want to create, bring this new thing into something that is already a no-brainer. On this note, let me know which one you are actively working on. Maybe it's all four of them. Let me know below in the comments. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear also what landed, what didn't. Maybe some things you tried were like, "Uh, I don't know because I struggle with that. So maybe I can actually answer um, below if you do have any questions or comments in regards to what I shared. Positive, negative, I want to hear it. I want to hear what worked for you, what didn't work for you. Um, And again, I could support you and why it didn't work for you if you share below. On this note, I'm wishing you such a powerful day. As always, there is a link uh, for the membership because that is just always open. And uh, I am currently taking on -on one-on-one clients for the three and the six month container. So if this is something that resonates, check it out below, reach out to me so we can have a clarity call to see if I can even support you with that which you want because sometimes um, it's not a fit and I can just suggest you maybe some books or somebody else I know that could help. So 
it's worth a shot, reach out to me and we can take it from there. So let us take a deep breath in. And exhaling out. It is a good time. It is a good day. And you are here as the best, most powerful version of you. So I wish for you to affirm that through your day. And until next time. <laughs>